in 2000, when I was um, still going to Woodman's Girls High School, I did a song called Fire Wall, Fire Wall. With Caperton, a lot of people wouldn't know that the liquor fight by so the behind that song there. Ah, I care. The whole connection came with Merciless through Gaddafi because you know at the time Gaddafi was managing Merciless. I got a long letter from Tanya Stevenson. Was there ever any comparison with you and Itana at that time there? Oh my God. At one point, I felt like I was suffocating in music, honestly speaking, until I was like, listen, I'm just going to be me. So even torn with somebody like Dexter Dabs. Do you ever get backlash from women that hate because of how My to God. Dexter performs on his shows? The love was there and the hate was there. <laughs> What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a special guest in the building. Listen, she's a singer, she's a songwriter, and she is the wind of the soul from Waterhouse, Kingston, Jamaica. You know we have in the building today? We have Ikea in the building today. What's going on, my sister? I'm good. I'm giving thanks. I'm here. And I'm with muscle. I'm on the muscle. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us here on the Entertainment Report podcast tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Definitely. I know somebody like you, I'm very interested to hear your story because I've seen you doing music for a while now, but there's a lot of stuff that we really want to talk about tonight. You understand? Right. All, All right. right. What was it like growing up in Waterhouse as a child back then? Oh, my God. Growing up in the heart of Waterhouse. Um, my mother. I was one of those child who couldn't even go to the gate. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make sure so you take your book and you can't even go at the gate. You can't even have fun. So I was raised very strict, you know, um, being in the art of waterhouse, you know, um, that's part of my inspiration too. Because I remember days like, you know, going to school, because I used to go to Women's Girls High School. And I remember days when, you know, my mom, she couldn't even find um, lunch money, couldn't even find fear for us to even go to school. So, waterhouse has been a great inspiration for IKEA in regards to I'm um, singing my way out of poverty. And what was the neighborhood like back then growing up that you could remember? Because remember, you said your mom wouldn't really let you pass the gate. So for what you could remember, what do you remember the neighborhood like? <laughs> Why, for me, as I said, I couldn't go outside. I couldn't go outside. The only time I've, I, I was, you know, when we let you for go through that gate there is either when I'm going to school, you know, so... um. The only thing I can remember is the ring of beer shots at times. That's it. Yeah. Did you grow up with any brothers or sisters also? Yes, I have a brother. He plays for Waterhouse and also he's a uh, footballer for Jamaica. Okay. So he's your older brother or younger brother? No, I am the oldest one for my mother. Mm -hmm. But, um, my mother, she has two kids, myself and my 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 brother. Mm -hmm. So we grew up, we grew up, you know, a, a strict home. We grew up in a strict home. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have to do is no study with book. <laughs> got, study you with book. got you hundred yeah, percent. Not even friends. We could even have friends over. Not none of that. Because I guess she was trying her best to protect you. To protect from us, she, you know, being in the in the in the. The, in Waterhouse, um, there's so much going on in regards to, you know, kids um, fall victims of a lot of stuff. So she was very protective of her two kids. Mm -hmm. You know, at one point, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, you, your mother strict by you. And as you grow old, you realize what they were doing. They were only trying to protect you and they only wanted to see the best for you. You know, but as kids, you're, you're like, oh. A mother, she's too strict. She don't want me going away. You know, we all do that as kids. We complain about a lot of things. But growing up, we realized what they were trying to do. Definitely. And even back then, 
in the middle of water house, you and your brother and stuff, you being the older one, what do you think you were going to get into growing up? What did you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a ballerina, a Barbie? What do you ballerina. want? Ballerina. <laughs> um, I've always had a passion for music, but, um, I was going to Woolman's Girls High School and I wanted to do accounting. Okay. Accounting, you know, anything to do with the daughters. <laughs> But, but my the thing is, my first love was always music. Like from a t um a little girl, I've always had a passion for music. Like music was my first love, my drive, and everything because um I've always been involved in the performing arts. Um, my mom was very supportive of that. You know, me being in that you know, singing and she's always bringing me to JCDC festivals because I've always been involved in those type of stuff. You know, so she was very supportive of that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So then you're thinking you're going to get to accounting, but that didn't really work out. When did you discover the first artistic thing about yourself, whether it was dancing, singing, acting, what was the first artistic thing you discovered? You know, my mother said she knew so me did I go turn a singer. She knew I was gonna turn a singer because every minute we used to ball. <laughs> every minute we used to ball, so she know. But um the thing is I have a musical background. The, the singing is in my genes. My grandfather, I've always been, you know, but on them, um, I listen to him, I play him kete drum. And all of that, and listening to him and my grandmother singing, and him harmonized with me. Grandmother, um, I've always had a love and a passion, and I've, I think in basic school, um, I even was singing with Third World. They came to visit my school, and I went up there and I sang with them. Um, at Pembrokeal Primary School, I was one of the lead singers at um, Pembrokeal Primary School, so I just knew that I was destined for for this to definitely get to music because I know you said you went to Wilmer's all girl high school and I think you had a you created a group then called B2K girls <laughs> yes lot of mercy like every day we used to go into the bathroom as we could wait till lunchtime we could wait till lunchtime mm -hmm. to meet up in the bathroom and um we went in there we always get a little crowd in there and we we're singing because I was the lead singer and I named the group B2K, Blessed, Katie, and Kelly. Yes. So, you know, the, in the school, we have beat decks, we have do all of them, something beer. So, yeah, you've been doing it. Been doing it. So then high school, so then you had your group. Did you guys actually go to perform at any of the school functions or anything we outside of school? We at any of the school functions. We used to perform at the school functions there. Mm -hmm. As yeah. B2K girls. B2K girls. Blessed <laughs> Katie and Kelly. <laughs> Got you. And how long How long did that group last for? I mean, until I left um, Woolmans Girls. Mm -hmm. Yes, till we, we all parted at when we all, you know, left school. And so then done school, you had your group. So then this is your, one of your first real pushes into entertainment and stuff. So then when you're done school, did you, continue on to do you go to work do you go into music what did you do when you're done school I, do, I, I to tell you the truth i don't know what a nine to five feels like <laughs> i've always been singing honestly speaking i don't know what a nine to five feels like um all right let me let me bring you back a little bit mm -hmm. in 2000 when i was um still going to woman's girls high school i did a song called by a Fire, whoa. With Caperton, a lot of people wouldn't know that the liquor fight by it, so they'd be I know song there. Ah, I care. Yes. Because Caperton and my dad, which is Bingy Blair, mm. a former former footballer for Waterhouse and Jamaica. Um, Caperton and him is they're very, 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 very good friends. So that's how the connection came about. So he brought me up by Caperton House. Caperton said, Yo, I've been hearing a lot about you. And, you know, I was so nervous because, you know, there was a whole lot of crowd in the yard and he was like, you have to sing, you have to sing, you have to sing. Mm -hmm. And I sang and he fell in love with my vocals and he, that's how I went on the track called Fire. Whoa. So when I went on that, that was in 2000 on the martial arts really. Mm -hmm. That was that, was that, that, that time I was still going to school. 
Yeah. Because that no, song is you, Jot Thunder, and Kilpatan. But if a lot of people don't realize the part that everybody's always jumping up to, it's your and part and Jot Thunder's. It's my part. Like, I've seen some videos over there by in Europe and like, fire, you hear the roll approach. Fire on the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty yes, wild yes. there. So that was your first actual official recording? First time in the that studio? That was my first actual recording professionally. Big up to Kilpatan. Big up to K. Batad. He was the, um, apart from my uncle, mm -hmm. knew that his niece have a beautiful voice. Um, he was the first person who brought me into a studio. Mm -hmm. But professionally, just being on a track, big up K. Batad. K. Batad was the first, that was my first official, official track, a feature with K. Batad. And that was when I was going to Woolman Square's high school. But wow. So did you become a part of David Host or that was just like a one-off song that you did? Oh my God. David Host, Kibaton. Kibaton is like my second dad. Where is mm -hmm. uh, David Host is a family. I used to be there every day, every single day. I mean, Kibaton is like a mentor to me also. So big up Kibaton, I have to be give up all the time because he, as I said, he was the first person to bring me to even record my official track. Mm -hmm. So of course... Yes. Um, it, it, it didn't stop there. I went on the road with him also. He brought me to small islands with him also. Yes. So it, it didn't stop there. So were you do so were you as when he brought you on the road, were you doing more backup or you were doing there to sing the song? I was doing like backup and also I was also you know the song came out, so I was doing also the song too. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And that was Kings of Kings you guys recorded that song for, which that is was Kings really of Kings, yes. Yes, the martial arts video. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They were based out of I, I could of the never forget that, that, that track. That track. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what it was like the first time you actually heard that song or heard yourself on a radio or in a dance or a car pass? Something where you first heard that song there. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it's it's it was a dream come true for me. Honestly speaking, and not only that, like to be on a track with K Patan is an honor. To be on a track with the fireman, mm -hmm. you know, so it was a great feel just hearing your your song or your voice on on a track with him on the radio. So it was a it was it was a great feeling. Good, and when you and I wanted more of that, and it, 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 it <laughs> I wanted more of that, and from there on, I've never stopped recording. Mm -hmm. What was your, did you have a stage name when you got to Kilpatan or you they gave you a name when you got there? Okay. I didn't have a name. It was my, my name was Katie Blair, you know, that's my birth name. But when I came around Kilpatan, um, they used to call me Aya K. Aya K. Kilpatan used to say, yo, Aya K. Aya K. But, um, I changed it to IK because I wanted something to, you know, that defines me as a person, you know, which is a very soulful person. And it, 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 it shows through my music, you know, wind of the soul, breath of life. I bring fresh here to the ears and to the soul, you know, so I change it to something that is more meaningful and that defines me, which is I care. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So it's Kilpatan. You started off, you got a, that's a grand entrance. To the music that business. was a grand entrance for me because it was I and K. And if you if you look back on the um if you look back on the the track which is um Firewood, it would be I and K. I K. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of people would even know it was IKEA. You know. Yeah. Back then. So then now you're. You're amongst the rest of them, David House and stuff. Did you ever think that you wanted to rass up or anything at that time there? Or this is just where you're figuring out who you are? To tell you the individual. truth, no. I've always been a rasta at heart. <laughs> yeah. But to tell you the honest truth, no. And being Blair, which is my dad, was like, you need to put on your locks. You need to wear your locks. You need to... <laughs> <laughs> and Kibutan is like, yeah, man, yeah, man, because the two of them is like that. Yeah, man, she needs to wear her locks, man, she needs to wear her locks. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm Rasta, I'm Rasta here. So you're being talks. more rebellious or you just didn't really figure that was for you? Um, 
I just don't think like uh, uh, um, I have to be rasped in order for it. You know, I, I'm at heart. So the hair doesn't define you. Yeah. That's you have I'm the saying. teachings that you understand. It's based upon your heart, you know? Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. Yeah, man. Okay. So I'm, I'm Rasta at heart, but the hair doesn't define who Ikea is. Got you. Right. With, with Kilpatan, you guys are, you, you did some couple of stuff on the road with him. And stuff. Mm-hmm. So then, when was the next time? Because you were still in school at this time here. So then, now, when did you really get into the music business to get into another studio besides that, that Kilpatan first time? Okay, um, I was still doing, you know, my harmonies and all of that. I linked up with Godafi. Mm-hmm. Godafi, um, he had called me because he said, "Oh my God, he loves my harmonies and all of that." So I went to his studio and he hired me to do some harmonies on some track that he was working on. Mm-hmm. Then he asked me to record something at his studio because he loved my vocals. Then Godafi introduced me to um, Alter Road Records and they're based in Canada. Mm-hmm. And I started to do some work with Alter Road Records. Before we even get to Outer Road, because you brought it up, but you kind of skipped it for a second. Remember, mm-hmm. with Gaddafi, you did um, Amber Alert with you and Merciless at that time. There. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And the, when I when 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 Gaddafi heard all the harmony tracks and he heard my voice, and I went to Gaddafi studio, start doing some stuff with Gaddafi. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole connection came with Merciless through Gaddafi because you know at the time Gaddafi was managing Merciless. Mm-hmm. Um, there was so much thing happening at the time and they called me and they said that they wanted me to do a book for a song. So I said, okay, fine. So I linked up with them and we we, we, we pencil out the, the idea because at the time there was so much things happening with kids missing and everything. So we came up with the idea and said that this is something that we wanted to address mm-hmm. and send a message out there, you know? So that's how Amber Alert came with Merciless. And it had visuals also because that and was, also, I actually yes, seen and the, we did the first. video and everything, and it was getting a whole lot of love, but wasn't getting a full support behind the music. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wish that song had gotten more support and more push behind that mm-hmm. song. You know? Did you guys actually ever perform that song live together anywhere? Oh my God, we have never, ever, ever <laughs> performed that song live. And mm-hmm. uh, rest in peace. Um, Merciless. We have never get a, gotten a chance to perform that song. But the thing is, um, they had called me in regards to come on stage to perform the song. And it was Sting. <laughs> <laughs> so me now, hearing about Sting, I think about Back Like a Flame. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that would be my first time, like, really going on a major, major, major stage. Mm-hmm. So I got cold feet. They were, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And then at the last minute, I got cold feet and they were calling me. I did an answer. I was like, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. But it's it's funny because the, fo- the, the year after, I went on Sting as a solo act. Mm-hmm. I went on Sting as a solo act, and trust me, I felt so much love being on that stage, you know? So, yeah. I But I guess that's part of being, we'll call it sheltered, because at that time you couldn't really go out. So if you heard about Sting, uh, in oh. your mind, you're just thinking about bottles and all type of madness going on. All type of madness, I just started to think about, and I got cold feet, and I was like, um, no, I'm not going. What did they say to you after, okay, because you're supposed to go, but you didn't end up going. What did they say to you after? Trust me, they weren't mad. They understand. Mm -hmm. They understand. They they, they were very supportive. They didn't get mad at at me at all, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I did redeem myself the next year by going on Sting as a solo act. Got you. So I I redeemed myself. (laughs) (laughs) Good. So you're working with Sting. So then now you linked up with um you said you linked up with Outer Road. But again, look, this is your second Canadian connection. Cause the first one a little bit was Kings of Kings, you know what I mean? Because they okay. were Canadian based working out of Jamaica. So then it was Gaddafi that linked you up with um Outer Road Records? 
Yes, God has still made the link with Outer Road Records from, from Canada. They're based in Canada. Um, they came at the studio one day. They fell in love with um, my vocals when I was there singing. And they started to ask questions in regards to, yo, who is this girl? And that's how we started to work. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then after that, the rest is history. We started working. We started creating songs and visuals and I think the first track I released with them was a song called Good Up, Good Up, Good Up, Good Up, Good Up. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the next track was Money Over Man. And then we released a song called Hard Way, which that was the song that opened the door for Ikea. So the first two were more dance hall based. But at this time here, when Hard Way came out, there was cultural dance hall was a hot thing. Even from Amber Alert, cultural dance hall was the hot thing at that time. Was the hot thing, right, at the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then right, now right, right. you went from singing, fire, so you're almost Rasta, you went to dance hall, you know what I mean? So you're over here in the dance hall world. But then you went to cultural dance hall, so it was like one foot in, one foot out. But it's really hard way that really opened the door for you, you understand? Oh, yeah. It was with that song. That really say, yo, let us give this girl a listening ear. Make we see what she have to offer to the business. You know, so that kind of opened the door for I brand IKEA. You see the thing with that song there too. If you were like in a dance and you were drunk and you weren't really paying attention, you would think it's like a gunman song. So you're quick to put up your hand and do all because of Because of the first two lines. <laughs> <laughs> but well, then you trick them into listening. <laughs> From 16, in my bus to 16. You never read, but in my Lord magazine. But those were the two catchy lines that grabbed the ears. Mm -hmm. Because as, as, as a writer and as a musician, you have to, the first two lines have to grab the ears of the audience, mm -hmm. the listeners. Definitely. So now this song came out. So then you said this is where your career really started to take off at this point here. Yes, yes, yes. This oh, was when I said, I noticed, oh my God, I, I, this is it. This is it. Yeah, this is it. This is it. So, <laughs> yes, when Hardway came out, oh my God, I was getting so much love, so much mothers, so much kids came up to me. Um, I had kids singing. I, I, I have everybody singing that song. Hardway, dubs was coming in. Everything was like taking off at the time. And I was really grateful and a big up to Ultra Road Records because they made it easier for me that I didn't have to go through some of the challenges that some females had to go through being into the business, you know, because I have to big up Ultra Road Records because my baby, if it wasn't for them, you would even know of a brand IKEA hmm. because there's so much talented artists out there right now that are trying so hard and they're not being heard. You know, 100%. so I have to big up them because they did a, we did a, a full promotion on that song. A full, full, it takes team effort. And I always believe it's not you alone. It's not you alone. It's take team effort. You know, so I have to pick them up also. They did a whole lot of promotion behind that song. And we finally get the, 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 the ears of the people. So were you flying before? No, you, you left with Cape Town, but as a, I care you yourself. Was this now when you had Hardaway? This was when you really started to fly or you were flying before that as a solo? I mean, I was flying before that. Um, I was doing Sting before even Hardaway. I was doing Follow the Arrow before Hardaway. All of them things that we didn't even clash. A lot of people didn't even know that we were clashing and <laughs> those stuff. But <laughs> hold on, you're not gonna you're not gonna skip over that part there so easy. When you say the clash, who did you clash with and where was this? Oh my god, sometimes I don't even want to really relive that moment. <laughs> you brought you brought you brought it up. You brought it up. Uh, you brought That's it up. That's why I was trying to like <laughs> Let's, yes, let's just I, was, I was trying not to relive that moment. Mm -hmm. I remember even during that time, I got a long, 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 long letter from Tanya Stevenson. Mm. She wrote me on Facebook. I had to look twice. I said, no, sir, Tanya Stevens, this. <laughs> because it's somebody that I really do love. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. I am inspired by her, by her. I love her lyrical content, everything about her. Mm-hmm. You know, and when I see that she took the time out to to really, you know, take the time out to really link me on Facebook, I felt really honored. Mm-hmm. Because this is like somebody that I look up to. So she had a, a issue with me doing the, the the whole clash thing. She was like, You you know, you know the type of voice that you have? Mm-hmm. Don't mingle with the bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. And from that, I did not look back. Yeah. So it was really so okay. So Kilpton, your 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 father, he's a big baller. Link you with Kilpton. Mm-hmm. Kilpton gave you a great break. You linked up with Gaddafi. He gave you another big break. You linked up with Outer Road. They gave you another break. But then Tanya Stevens, now she came in and was trying to show you direction as her being more of a senior artist at that time there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. There was thing there. There's still one thing you skipped over, you know, this clash. Who did you clash? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't want to talk about that clash. I really don't want to talk about that clash. Say my mentor say, yo, hear what happened. You have a beautiful voice. Use it to your advantage. You don't need to mingle with the bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. So we move on from there. And we start to just put out music. And that's when... Because hard- we don't think we have to depend on them that we, we, we reach nowhere. And that's when hard way, that was after talking to her and stuff, this was... After this is when Hardway came about, yeah, because this was um, this was way before Hardway. Mm-hmm. This was way, way before Hardway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I know you're a singer, you're a DJ, and you're a sing J, and I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere where you could rap also too. Give thanks to the Almighty. Um, um, you know, He has blessed me, truly blessed me, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. You're with Outer Road. How, how long did the situation last with um, Outer Road? Oh, my God. I mean, let me see when. When I parted from Outer Road Records. After Fly Away. Mm-hmm. I had a song called Fly Away, which was produced by Don Carleon. I've been working for Outer Road for like, couple years well Mm -hmm. but after i did the song fly away um we parted like might be a year after fly away i parted from them i I don't remember i think it's fly away 2012 or 2011 2012 i think Mm -hmm. yes so i I parted with them after that because i remember fly away was a powerful song too if i remember good very powerful song right things were just not working out and i just decided to to part, you know? What was it like working with a producer like Don Corleone, especially him being the Don at that time there? What was it like? Oh my God. That's him? everybody dream to work with the Don Corleone. I mean, in the time where Hardway was doing his thing, it was blowing up and everything. And then I dropped Ain't Giving Up. All of them songs. No, I mean, Hi With You, Hi With You. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a call. And my team said that Don was trying to find me. So they brought the phone to me and Don was like, oh my God, you're the hardest person to find. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're the hardest person to find. And I said, oh, yeah. He was like, yes, but me not look for you. And he told me that he had a juggling going out and he wants me to be a part of it. He loves my vocals and everything. And he really wants me to be a part of the project. Mm-hmm. And all right, I said, okay, then by tomorrow, I'm going to send you a demo. So I went into the studio at the same time, you know, and I sent him a demo of Fly Away. And he fell in love with the song and he was like, yo, you need to come to the studio and record this. He said, this is a big song. Mm-hmm. And what happened now, I, I think I went away and uh, he called me again. I said, yo, I need you to come and record because... He was about to drop the rhythm. He was about to drop the rhythm. So when I get back to Jamaica, um, I went up by Dan Carly at studio. Mm-hmm. When I went there to record, 
went in the recording stu- recorded the, the, the box. Mm-hmm. When I went to open my mouth, there was no voice. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was like, hold up. No, 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 no. This is my first time meeting Dan D, Dan Carly, or D, you know. And when I went into the, the, the box, you know, no voice. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, 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 no. I started to cry because I was like, my one little opportunity for me, Dan, and then this got happened. Then the artist thing when I'm going to tell me say is the rhythm dropping tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, the rhythm, the rhythm dropping tomorrow. I'm like, are you serious? He was like, yes. So I said, all right, then I'm going to come back tomorrow. But promise me I'm going to come back early tomorrow. So I'm saying, I don't think it, you really think you can come back tomorrow because the way all your song, because you're not no vice at all. So I'm like, um, yeah, man, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. So he was like, all right, then we're going to set the time for such and such time. To tell you the honest truth, I didn't know if I was going to be able to sing that song. Hmm? Mm. I'm like, Father God, because I start, me start crying now. I'm going to say, Father God, why now? <laughs> why? So I even went to the doctor about my, my, my throat. And then it's like, I decided, said, no talking, no talking. I start praying. I'm going to say, Father God, do my vibes come back. So I went to the, the studio the next morning. And when I went there, I didn't even know if my vines come back enough. Mm. When I reached up by the studio, I said, you say, you're ready? I said, yeah, I'm ready. Them time they asked I don't know if I have no vines. You see, when I just went to the studio and I said the 23rd stars, mm-hmm. I said, God, I leave it this in your hand. And I opened my mouth and I was, Lord Jesus, Oh, the place to look pop at man and some people. And meanwhile, me, I sing the song, Tears are Flow Through My Flow Down My Face. Huh? Hmm. Meanwhile, because I was going through so much at the time, you know, um, and if you listen to the song, no for them artists, but them can't test are jobless. But no say them artists, but my one press regardless. Because I was getting a whole lot of fight too, you know, being in the, the industry, but you know, we're still here. Mm-hmm. Was that the only song that you recorded with Don Carlo? No, I did a song also called Broken Wings. Mm-hmm. That was the follow-up after Fly Away, the continuation. Even with my broken wings, I still managed to fly away. Mm-hmm. And that song was when I we I already split with Outer Road Records. Mm-hmm. So you're basically on your own at this time here now when you... I was on my own at the time, yes. That time, Hardway was going on, Fly Away was going on really good. Because as I said, remember when he said that the song would be coming out the next day. I mean, I record the song, everything. By the time I reached back home, he was like, Dan was like, but mix the song already, you know? He said, listen, it's three, it's seven o'clock tonight on the radio. You know? I said, what you say? He said, yeah. Mm-hmm. And trust me, them time, let me tell you, tears have flowed on my eye, tears have flowed on my eye. And then pull up the song over and over and over. And a lot of people would even know how much things but go through to record that one song. And who else was on that juggling there? Because remember, when he was putting out juggling, I mean, it was oh your big God. It was an honor to be on a juggling with so much greats. I mean, um, Vibes, Cartel was on there, Cecile was on there, um, Jack Hero was on there. I was the little one on the reading, but you know, you know, I I, <laughs> I mean, I stood I stood up with those big guns, you know. Back then. This time in this period here. Was there ever any comparison with you and Itana at that time there? Oh, my God. Why? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, uh, we're two different artists, two unique artists. Mm-hmm. Have our own sound and have our own style. I did not see the comparison at all because... From ever since IKEA is a ripple and IKEA touch on different, different topics where I don't think Brandy Connor would even touch certain topics. 
You know what I'm saying? Because she's more of a straight, like, reggae, reggae um, culture artist. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people thought Ikea was a street culture artist because I did Fly Away, in which I did that song. I didn't expect, like, it was just draw me in that box. Mm-hmm. Sing, you know, she's a culture song, a culture artist, or whatever it is. I just do music, and if you listen from way before, I've been doing song like Udo, Udo, Money Over Man, Hard Way, and in between that time to have Hard Way and Fly Away, I did song like High High with You. I want to get high with you, ride or die for my man, but we clap it ain't giving up. So. I don't I I was really trying to get the comparison because a lot of persons, a lot of people were saying that yo, we have similar sound in which I really did not see it. Mm. You know, we're two different, two different artists. And because you know the business, it's usually a business of one at a time. You understand? So did that kind of was that part of the quote unquote fight where they're saying, hey, we have this person already and we don't really need you type of thing? I I really don't know, but I just know music business have a whole lot of politics. Mm-hmm. And as you say, that do happen in the business too, where they try to shun out another one because they feel like, okay, we already have a, 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 a person like this already. So I mean, I think we can balance two of them. So even a person will feel threatened by you coming into the business and do a lot of things by saying, oh, but I perform on the stage with her because I've experienced that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've experienced that where an artist, where artists say, no, but I perform on the same stage as I can. That's because crazy. obviously there's something good about I and that's something that must make you feel threatened. Mm-hmm. You understand when I don't see why though, you know what I'm saying? The, the key, be, for everybody, if you get piece of it, so, I mean, there's just, just a whole lot of politics in the business, you know, but that not stop me. I always say that good music will speak for itself, you know? For sure. Another person, this is where you have excellent chemistry, Dexterdaps. When did you <laughs> meet, when was the first time you heard, met, or even linked with Dexterdaps? Oh my God. I know, I, I've known Dexter for years, years. That, oh my God, that's my G. I'm a general that. Mm. Um, before him even blew up this big, like I've known him, you know. Um, we did a song even before our hit song called Nosy Neighbor. We did a song way before that for Dasika, but that song did not come out. Um, in 2019, mm-hmm. That's, that's, yeah, in 2019, I linked him and I said, yo, Dexter, I have a song that I want us to do. And he was like, yeah, so I I, I kind of give him an idea of the song. And he was like, yo, you sure you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, if you didn't be sure you want to do that, of course, I want to do it, this I want to do. So I said, all right, then we're going to link up for the studio. We're going to go for the studio. So I called Frankie and I, I, and I got some time up by Frankie Music Studio. And we went there and uh, magic. The song is just magic. I mean, the chemistry is there. Right? It's, 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 you can't deny it. 100%. So even with Nosy Neighbor, that was your, your concept. And then you brought it to him and this is what you guys, this is how it panned out. Yes, it was all my idea. Mm-hmm. And we went in the studio and we worked together and to make magic and there goes Nosy Neighbor, produced by Triple L Records from Jungle. Big up yourself, Triple L Records. Mm-hmm. Um, great, great production. You know, solid. Looking at and it was even like trending that. on TikTok. The song, I mean, we did the song in 20, it, it, 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, when I, I let me take you back to when I when when we when I did the song and we were at the studio, he fell in love love with the song. He fell in love with the song, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I want this song for my album." And I was like, whoa, thank you. And he was like, yeah, I want it from a vent album. And I said, all right, then cool. And then um, he said that Ikea and Moa bring up on the road. And I said, come, we start to tour with him. And we start to promote the song on the road. So this was just from you have an idea. He liked the idea. You guys had good chemistry. He took it for his album and said, you know what? This is so good. Let's go on the road together. All of this happened because of an idea you had in your mind. Right. 
right. Yeah. Everything happened right from that moment. Mm -hmm. Looking at a song like Nosy Neighbor, that seems like that it's more of Dexter. It sounds like Dexter would come to you with that type of idea. <laughs> I know a lot of people is like, ooh, I know. That's why he was like, you sure you want to do that? I was like, yes, I'm sure. You know, um, mm -hmm. and I keep telling people this because, as I said, because of Fly Away, a lot of people take me for, at one point, they were like, when the song oh, I thought she was a Christian. I didn't say I was a Christian. And I don't mislead people. And I don't try to listen. Um, I don't try to be something that I'm not. You know, I stay true to myself and I stay true to my music also. Um, I've been doing song like this from a longer time. But it's just that they gravitated to the hard way and the fly away. But the rebel side and the, the gangster side been there you know so it's nothing new about ikea and at the moment doing flyaway i felt like i was in a box honestly speaking like i felt like i was really really in a box um when i didn't fly away i was only getting one job one job one job and no problem with that because i love reggae i love reggae i love reggae reggae is a heartbeat of the people you know it's soul music but I just wanted to express, express myself however I want to. I never want to feel like I was in a box. And music is an expression and it's supposed to be freely. You're supposed to be freely. You can tell a story in whatever way or form you want to, you know? So that was the case with me there. At, least at one point, I felt like I was suffocating in music, honestly speaking, mm -hmm. until I was like, listen, I'm just going to be me, you know? So that was almost like your rebellious music. It's like, come hell or high water, I'm putting out this song just to It's the rebellious the sound. Like, it's this Cadian coming out in Ikea. Like, listen. <laughs> like, I just want to be free. Like, I just want to do me. And not only that, I just want to do music to relate to every audience. When it comes to brand Ikea, I can, I can sing church. I can be in the church. I can do, I want to do a, uh, a gospel album, if I feel like today, if I want to do a dance song, if I want to do reggae. So if I want to go sing in at the church I'm on it, I do have the songs. Mm -hmm. I can do corporate events. I've been doing corporate events. I do have the songs for corporate events. If I want to go to the dance hall scene where the crowd did that side day, I do have the song. Why am I going to box myself when I'm, I, I, I'm really versed, like but really creative? Why am I going to do that? Mm -hmm. Here you hunt. Music is an art. An expression. You, it, you might wake so, up today and want to do this. It's just your spirit. Whatever spirit jumped into you. It's whatever spirit. And people. it's whatever the beat tells you to at the time and whatever you see happening. So why am I going to, okay, box myself? Because, okay, they expect me to be this way. They expect me to be this way. Like, I won't be living. Like, to me, I feel like I'm just dead to the world. Like, I won't be living. I want to live through my music too, you know? Makes sense. You said you went on, how many times have you been on the road with Dexter? Was it one time or a couple of times? Oh my God. I've been on the road for two years. <laughs> <laughs> I did not even realize I was on the road for two years. It's when I sit down, I was like, yo, I got a break, click of it. Yeah. You know, um, and I, you know, it's like break and then work on some stuff for myself in regards to whatever. But um, when I really check it, it was from like, oh, what, 2020 to 2022? 20, yeah, it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was for two years I've been on the road touring with him all over. Because what, what I noticed is like you guys, you and Dexter and that camp there were one of the few artists that was actually on the road even during Corona and stuff. When it was in the height, you guys were still on the road finding places and finding ways to work. Oh my God. It was a blessing to be of yourself be Dexter. Because at the time, like every show that I had was canceled. Every show that I had was canceled at the time. And then here comes Dexter. I'm going to bring you on the road. You know, so I have to big up Dexter and thank him for sharing his platform and his audience with me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, man. Definitely. But there, but this is where the but comes into play. But, but 
there was one viral moment that came out of you guys being on the road. <laughs> what? Uh huh. You remember Gallus Wednesday? <laughs> listen, listen. Oh my God. What? <laughs> Gallus Wednesday. Oh my God. Oh my God. Gallus Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, we were there just having fun. <laughs> we were there just by the, you know, the music come on. Mataran was there. Puta was there. You know, they started to play the song. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Mataran, they found, yeah, I forgot to jump on it. Just that way, jump on it on the stage. I was like, oh my God, now. Mm-hmm. Then, at the time, we were a little bit, you know, tipsy. So, you know, next and he wasn't too sturdy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, when Mataran didn't know the band, no, no, forgot something. So they started to play nosy neighbor. And we all were in a vibe there and everything. And then we jumped on it. And then the knees went. <laughs> <laughs> But you when the world didn't look no way, we just, you know what I'm saying? And then, oh my God, the morning was like, kid, and you check your phone yet? So, Mr. Wid, what? Mm-hmm. Did you check your phone? Mr. said, no. Yes, you, you know, check your phone. Come and know where you come. My right <laughs> man. I said, Jesus Christ, of what is now? Mm-hmm. And so that so done. It was all over. All mm-hmm. over, all over, all over. Mm-hmm. I definitely remember that. So even torn with somebody like Dexter Daps, do you ever get backlash from women that just, I guess, just straight up hate because of how My to God. Dexter performs on his shows? The love was there mm-hmm. and the hate was there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Because I mean, and the woman, the man, and me just borrow the woman, the man, for a little bit. <laughs> so everybody think that you know I should be the one all over him. I should be the one on top of him, you know, jumping up on him, all of them something there. So I, you know, me never take we're not the from uni no can can share. Eh? <laughs> I get, I can share, you know. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't taking away anything from you. We just, we're just performing and we're just having fun at the moment too. So you know, but there was a lot of hate too. That was like, oh my god, you know. So, but my love to see him with. Mm-hmm. It was a great experience talking about. He would share one of your songs, "Take Him," has three <laughs> plus million views on it. All right. How did you right. come up with that concept for that song and even the visuals? Boy, to tell you the truth, it's my experience. Mm-hmm. And a lot of women experience. And I do sing for the women. And uh, I've always said I would never, ever fight over a man. That is my philosophy. I would never, ever, ever fight over a man. Mm-hmm. Because one thing I know, you never know what that man is telling the other female. And I would tell any female to not. So I wanted to send out that message. Don't make yourself look dumb by fighting over a man. So I've had experiences where people call my phone and they start cussing about them. Them say, I'd see them, man, but which we are they now. You're 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 yes, a different yes. character. You, Where you're are a they different now? character. Huh? Huh? You're a different character altogether. You, you no, have the, you have this I'm nice this nice singing music. If if I listen, I would not call a female arguing over a man. If I even tell the phone to call a female, is because me just want to fi, 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 make sure say yo because he's telling me another thing. I mean, I believe what you must say. Mm-hmm. So me just want to know if something goes up. Me not cry for argue, cause me would join a female say fit 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 beat a man. Not 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 not, <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> right. 
because since you're talking about beat up man and all those things there, your newer song came out this year, Self-Defense. But this is more, it's more in a serious vein, but it's still mm-hmm. relationship-wise. Tell me about that song there and the concept of how you came up with that there. Self-defense. I'm just letting poor women know that you have to stand up for your rights. Mm-hmm. Is that To me, it's either me or you, and it's not going to be me. Is either I walk away, but I am going to defend myself. That's what I'm saying, basically, because there's a lot of female who are in abusive relationship. And I've had a friend who I lost through domestic violence, where her boyfriend shot her and shot self. Wow. Mm-hmm. So um, I've always advocated uh, um, against those stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so self-defense is just standing up for your rights. Take a stand. Is that you walk away? Or if you reach a stage where you can't walk away, you just, because what are you going to do? Stand up there and make the man beat you? Mm -hmm. Defend yourself. That's basically it. Powerful song. Another one of your powerful, this is one of your new songs here, just came out a couple months ago, was um, Blood on Your Hands. <laughs> mm-hmm. You you seem to be, I could understand now what that note from Tanya Stevens basically did for you in your career because you could, I could see your wordplay and how you touch on topics that a lot of other, not even female, a lot of artists, period, Don't really touch on in that type of way. So let's explore blood on your hands a bit. Oh, my God. That's one of the songs. It was produced by Natural Bond Entertainment. Um, Sent me a rhythm, fell in love with the rhythm. At the time, it's a topic that I've always wanted to touch on Mm -hmm. because I've been seeing a whole lot of things happening on the news and I've had friends who have experienced abuse and persons that I know have been um, molested when they're, they were, were, you know, eight and 10 years old, mm-hmm. you know, even 15 years old. And they, they go to their mother and their mother did not believe anything that they say in regards to, you know, them man, I touched them picnic. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to believe that. And I've seen the trauma and I've seen the scar that (laughs) my friend endured, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been seeing the news lately and every second it's uh, it's ongoing, it's ongoing. You see a child missing, you see a woman missing, you see our kids are being raped and killed. And I just wanted to be the voice for change. I wanted to be vocal on that. Mm-hmm. I think the message is in the message in music is needed. And I think there needs to be a balance within our music. Definitely. Power, powerful music from a powerful singer with a powerful voice. You understand? Right. Last song. So I oh. really wanted to touch that topic. Mm-hmm. And um, Jamaica need it right now. The world need it right now. Because it doesn't only happen in Jamaica, but... I have to touch Jamaica because I know don't, I don't let some me come from. So I want the problem fixed right there. So. But it's a worldwide situation. It's a world song. Eh? For sure. And in order for this to... <laughs> I mean, Blood on Your Hands is a very impactful song mm. and a very touching song. And it's very emotional too because since I, since I dropped the song, I mean, I've seen so many persons come forward with their stories. Women have come forward with their stories. And I'm saddened by their stories of, you know, being an eight-year-old child and a a, a six-year-old child and being um, molested by a family member. Because it's mostly by who, you know, somebody close. You know, so I was really saddened by all of the stories and, 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 I realize that there's a lot of persons suffering in silence. 
trauma. And that song, I made, that song, they made me know, say, yo, there's women who are going through a whole lot because I, I, I've had um, somebody come on Instagram and they, they, they DM me and she told me about her story. And she said she was about to commit suicide and my music was one of the, 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 the music who saved her. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's hurt people, hurt people, you know? Yes, yeah, so... My thing is, we need to make messaging music trend again. Balance back the music. Mm. We need to make messages in music trend. And that's what I'm trying also to gain from this, a change. We can do different type of music, you know, because... All right, yes, you feel that we get a time here and all of that. You sing about different topics and everything, but we have to balance it. Make we give them like a message too. You there, there's a wide spectrum of life. Life is about wide spectrum fun. of, of life. course. Of course. The wide, it, <laughs> it's not always about making love or the, the, the underneath. It's not always about that. Mm-hmm. It's too much things happening around us where we just focus on one thing. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Last song here I want to talk to you about. This is your new song here also. Die in Love. All right? This mm-hmm. is another topic. Again, as you said, you have a wide range of topics, just like your voice is a wide range. Die I in try love. not How to limit my topics. I try not to limit my topics like I don't want to limit my creativity mm-hmm. and limit my focus to be vocal with different things. Um mm-hmm. I make music so everybody could relate and say, yo, that's my story. A me chair talk. Right? Make you just make for say, all right, we're gonna go in a bedroom when there's so much to talk about or sing about. Mm-hmm. You know? And- so dying in love is another relatable topic because we all die in love. <laughs> We all, as you said, we all have that one person that we were mad over. And that's what we <laughs> We all have that one person that we go crazy over. We all have that person that, no matter what them do, is like, yo, there's something about that person. You know you should let go, but you keep going back. You keep going back. Mm-hmm. Men can relate. Women can relate. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can say, yo, you know, I mean, she's talking, you because know, enough time I feel that way they, the man heard my more time. I must still find my way back. But there's just something that keeps me going back. Definitely. You remember before we push record, I told you this was going to be a different conversation? Right. You believe me now? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because somebody like you, there's you have so much music and all that, but I just wanted to really get into the soul of I can really see what's in there and really present it to the people. Right, 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 right. right. understand. Floor is yours right now. Anything you want to big up, anything you want to say, leave some social contacts, booking contacts, all that good stuff before I get you out of here. Oh, my God. I just want to thank you. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Um, I mean, thanks to the fans that keep me going. Even when there's time when I feel like I want to let go, honestly speaking, there's times when I feel like I don't want to do this anymore because I've been doing this for years, years, and we know the politics and the music and everything. But Manag, uh, I can't. The, the fans, they're like, "Oh God, I'm praying for you. It's about time." And really, but I always say something like, "God and time." It's about God and time, and a lot of time they motivate me. They keep me going. And just by telling their story, how I inspire them and how my music saved them makes me want to continue. And I'm going to continue just to please the fans also, you know, because if if, if it was for the industry, (laughs) may that being said, you want to take it back? What? Long time. And, you know, I, I am just grateful and I am grateful to be doing music and I'm grateful to be touching souls. And I inspire a lot. I inspire a lot. I got a lot of babies that I didn't birth. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So that means I'm doing something good in music because I have a lot of babies when they have birth. So that means I am doing so, um, um, something good in music. And there's a lot of persons that I inspire, but they would never tell you that. But you have some people who would come and say, yo, you know, so you inspire me to, to sound that we are inspired. Yeah. But that means I'm doing something great. For sure. That, so that means you need to continue because you're doing something great like you are. You know, you're inspiring a lot of people and a lot of artists too. You know, so, I mean, thank you for having me. Big up Dean. I mean, Dying in Love is Out, produced by Agile. And, and for that song, I'm also doing a TikTok challenge for it too. Yes. And I'm giving away a thousand US dollars for that song. Eh? Mm -hmm. So, yes, look for the video. The video is all dying in love, blood on your hands. Oh, no. And I want you to continue sharing and continue sharing. And thanks to everybody that has been sharing and sharing and sharing. I appreciate you all. Without you, I couldn't have done it. Sure. I'm where, really grateful. Where can they check you out on social media and bookings, Lisa? On social oh. media. On social media, it's IKA One Soul, IKA -A Y A One, which is the number one soul, S O U L. Yeah. And for Facebook, it's IKEA Music. And for TikTok, it's IKEA One Soul, too. Yeah. And for bookings, it's IKEA Bookings at gmail.com. IKEA -A -Y -A Bookings with an S at gmail.com. IKEA. You were open, you were honest, you painted a good picture, you had a great conversation. I can't wait to actually sit down with you again when you actually come to Toronto. I know you come up here a lot of the time and we'll sit down and talk in the studio. I can't wait to come back there. I can't wait to come back there. I can't wait to come back there. You know? Definitely. Yeah, man. Let so me give you nothing to change about IKEA. It's the same IKEA as thinking from why French and ugly girl. Don't come tell me you're sorry. They'll make it no easier. Pack your things up and leave. Go on with your ugly girl. That's what I'm going to say. I'd rather be the girl with boom on the side. Than a woman who cries when you don't come home at night. I'm sad as well with me getting the girl on the side. But you know I'm a tough act. Take him on one. Well, if you say I'm your bond, then take him in up. I don't know, not for me. He said, let him go. I'm under the leaf, morning crease. <laughs> but first, my use of my club priest. My way to this morning, I need that chop club priest. You are your man, no word, my time. And even a father is not the night of the dirt under the wallaby. Last time I checked your man, no world. Please, I can pitch an auxiliary. Feed up, so me a west to <laughs> Epic conversation epic ending let me give you an outro and get you out of here you hear right. <laughs> wow. well ladies and gentlemen this is muscle and this has been another two line music cuts entertainment report podcast and we are out big up muscle i'm out <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusica.com. 